An astronaut, gripped by terror, discovered a mysterious object hurtling through space directly toward them. She had just alerted her teammates when a mysterious purple cloud collided head-on with their space station. Instantly, the space station lost all contact with the oceanographic research vessel on the sea below. As confusion reigned, the crew's desperate cries for help sporadically broke through the transmission, but the ordeal was far from over. Moments later, a massive pulse of energy traveled down the radar beam, striking the research vessel at sea, which erupted in sparks and lightning. Scientist Nadia discovered something was invading the mainframe, and the crew, attempting to intervene, was knocked unconscious by a powerful electric shock. Chaos ensued aboard the vessel as screams echoed one after another. Soon after, the Russian research vessel is lost. Seven days later, a massive typhoon swept through the area. A passing cargo ship, caught in the storm, faced giant waves that nearly tore it apart, fearing they would all be lost to the sea. Captain Robert, on the advice of his crew, decided to steer the tugboat into the eye of the storm for shelter. Unexpectedly, the tow line couldn't withstand the weight and snapped instantly severing the connection and sending the cargo ship plummeting to the ocean floor, watching his livelihood vanish before his eyes. Robert was left despairing, though they successfully found temporary safety in the eye of the typhoon. Their tugboat was badly damaged and ill-equipped to withstand another assault from the storm, with their food supply dwindling. The crew had no choice but to call for rescue. At that moment, the keen-eyed navigator, Kit, noticed a signal on the radar. Surprisingly there were other ships trapped in the eye of the typhoon, and it looked like a big one as well. Kit quickly attempted contact but received no response, so they steered the tugboat toward the target. Before long, a massive ship loomed before them. After checking their records, they confirmed it was a Russian research vessel, seemingly attacked. Repeated calls went unanswered, so the crew decided to board the ship, armed, to investigate. Strangely, the ship was riddled with signs of a struggle and bloodstains, yet no bodies were found. When the crew reached the bridge, they found it in utter disarray. The control systems had already lost power. Could it have been a pirate attack? However, at that moment, crew members Richie and Robert shared a knowing smile. Under maritime law, they could claim a salvage reward worth 10% of the vessel's value if they towed it back to its owner a ship worth at least $300 million meant a reward of $30 million. This way they can not only recover all their losses, but also earn a large additional commission. Hearing this, laughter broke out among the crew. Only Kit felt uneasy. Such windfalls don't come without risks, and the ship's mystery remained unsolved, possibly harboring danger, but Robert was not so sure. He was already overwhelmed by the money and arranged for Steve and Squeaky to come to the engine room to carry out an overhaul. Steve opened the control box to find someone had deliberately disconnected the relays, cutting power to the ship. Unperturbed, they reinserted the relays and switched the power back on, successfully restarting the ship's engines. Little did they know that this very action would plunge them into irredeemable peril. As the power system was restored, machinery throughout the ship were to life. And in the bridge, Robert and Kit heard unsettling sounds, yet Robert remained unconcerned, instructing the crew to proceed with towing the ship. At that moment, Kit noticed the computer seemed to be under someone else's control. Robert rushed over to check but he didn't realize that the camera was silently pointed at him. Then, they discovered the computer was manipulating the ship's anchor. The towboat below is penetrated and Hiko on the deck survives, but the crisis doesn't end there, as a huge amount of seawater rushes in. Seeing the tugboat about to sink, Steve had no choice but to dive in to rescue people. Just as he pulled Hiko to safety, the tugboat sank into the deep sea. Realizing there might be people on board, Steve quickly contacted Squeaky in the engine room, urging him to stay alert. Meanwhile, Robert instructed Richie and Woods to immediately head to the engine room to back up Squeaky while the others helped the injured Hiko to the medical room to bandage his wounds. But no sooner had Squeaky ended the call than he noticed something odd. Something had suddenly dragged the electrical cables into the conduit. Squeaky cautiously approached to investigate. Hello? Receiving no response and driven by curiosity, Squeaky crawled into the conduit to see what was going on, but as soon as he saw a strange figure, the cables above his head locked him in place. Meanwhile, Richie and Woods, on their way to the engine room, accidentally stumbled into the armory. For safety, they took several weapons with them. They then discovered a missile in another room, along with ejection seats for emergency escape. 
As a retired Navy weapons expert, Ricci was particularly interested in this. But Woods, noticing a lot of blood, wanted to leave quickly, fearing danger. They made their way through a jumble of cables to the next room. Suddenly, a mechanical cable appeared out of nowhere, startling them. Ricci immediately opened fire until it was motionless. Picking up the object, Ricci realized it was a type of high-tech robot he had never seen before. Meanwhile, as the others were treating Hiko's wounds, they discovered a survivor hiding in a cabinet, a masked figure who suddenly opened fire on them. Fortunately, Steve was quick to subdue her, and no one was hit by the bullets. When they removed her mask, they found she was a classic Russian beauty Nadia, the surviving scientist. Fearing for his teammates in the engine room, Steve tried to reach them via walkie-talkie but got no response. He then informed Richie and Woods of the situation in the medical room and told them to stay alert while he headed to the engine room with weapons. Nadia soon regained consciousness, but she seemed quite shaken. When questioned, Nadia revealed that everyone else had been killed and warned them to cut the power or they would all die on the ship. Seeing that they didn't grasp the severity of the situation, Nadia took the opportunity to escape. On the way, she grabbed a firefighter's axe. Intent on cutting the power again, Kit, catching up to her, aimed his pistol at Nadia, demanding she drop the axe and insisting he meant no harm. She just wanted to understand what was happening on the ship. Gradually lowering her guard, Nadia began to detail the events on the research ship. Since the attack by an unknown energy, the computer had been controlled by a mysterious force. They realized that this energy was extremely complex, seemingly carrying a mysterious virus from outer space. It had not only invaded all electronic devices but also began learning human knowledge. Its ultimate goal was to create robots to hunt humans, even using human corpses to create various mechanical monsters. Only when Nadia managed to turn off the ship's power did everything finally stop. But now that the power was on again, it meant the virus had been reactivated. Although Kit wanted to believe Nadia, her claim seemed far-fetched. So when Robert and Hiko arrived, they decided to detain Nadia to prevent her from escaping again. Unbeknownst to them, Richie and Woods had already witnessed the production of mechanical monsters in the engine room. Yet, they didn't realize the danger, thinking these were just high-tech robots made by the Russians. Curious. Richie couldn't resist poking a small robot with his shotgun, only to have the robot attack Woods with nails. Richie was also stabbed in the buttocks by a drill, infuriating him into a barrage of gunfire. Suddenly, a humanoid figure appeared and unleashed a frenzied shooting spree at them. In the chaos, the two men could only shoot as they retreated, making a clumsy escape from the engine room. Steve, who reached the engine room first, found the steel door had been firmly welded shut, and there was no sign of his teammates inside. Soon, Richie and Woods arrived at the scene and shared their recent encounter with Steve. It was then that they realized their teammates might have already met with disaster. At that moment, Woods suddenly smelled the stench of rotting corpses, and as they turned around, they spotted a humanoid monster in the corridor camera. Clearly, this was a mechanical monster created by the alien virus using human corpses. Without hesitation, the monster pulled the trigger at them. Seizing the opportunity while the monster was reloading, they fired back, and their combined firepower quickly brought it down. The others finally believed Nadia's words when they carried the body of the robot monster to the cab. And this half-human, half-machine creature was none other than the transformed ship's captain. Nadia emphasized again that the only chance was to cut the ship's power since the alien virus seemed to only operate through electronic devices. But before they could act, a typhoon swept in again, causing massive waves that violently shook the ship. Robert tried to steer the ship away from the area but found it ineffective. It seemed that to control the ship, they had to find a way to open the welded steel door of the engine room. As they prepared to move, Kit noticed through the compass that the ship was turning on its own, clearly under the virus's control. The group was about to head to the engine room when they heard noises from a cabin behind them, thinking it might be their missing teammate. They prepared to open the steel door in front of them, as they had guessed. Behind the door was the missing Squeaky, but he had been transformed into a monster. More terrifyingly, behind Squeaky was an even larger mechanical monster, whose immense strength seemed capable of destroying everything around it. Woods, who was closest to the monster, was carelessly captured and fatally punched through by the larger beast. Seeing this, the others quickly opened fire, but the bullets had no effect. At a critical moment, Nadia swiftly opened a door and everyone rushed into the room to take cover. But this was only a temporary safety as the monster began to ram the door. Richie managed to repair a communication device to call for help. But Robert shot it, still fixated on the $30 million in salvage fees. 
He didn't want anyone else to know about the ship's existence, furious. Kit swung a punch at Robert, subsequently. Kit and Nadia prepared to confront the monster that was about to break through the door. Meanwhile, Richie had a sudden idea to negotiate with the virus, to find out its true purpose for invading Earth. Using the computer, he indeed made contact with the virus, but the entity's response left everyone utterly hopeless. Unexpectedly, the alien considered humans to be the virus, and its mission was to eradicate humanity and convert human bodies into parts for making mechanical monsters. Richie, eager to continue questioning, found that the alien being had abruptly ended the call and simultaneously commanded the mechanical monsters to attack them again. In the next instant, the transformed Squeaky burst in. After a barrage of gunfire took down Squeaky, Richie, fueled by adrenaline, blasted through the steel door with a rocket launcher and stormed off. Cursing under his breath, it seemed that Richie was on the verge of a breakdown, the others quickly followed him, leaving only Robert, who harbored deep resentment, behind. After everyone else had left, Robert resumed his dialogue with the virus. Disturbingly, Robert planned to collaborate with the virus. He intended to drive the ship to the port, allowing the virus to spread across more electronic devices and cables on land. In exchange for the virus transforming him, Robert wanted to use this power to make those who disrespected him pay. The virus agreed to Robert's terms and guided him to the production workshop of the mechanical monsters. Seeing Woods, already disassembled, Robert was not frightened but rather slightly thrilled. Meanwhile, Richie, now alone in the armory, used everything available to create a bomb powerful enough to destroy everything, but the other four were less fortunate. They had caught the attention of the giant mechanical monster and barely escaped to the deck via a vertical shaft. The intense typhoon made it nearly impossible for them to move. Suddenly, a massive wave crashed into the ship, sweeping Hiko, who was at the back, into the sea. The three ahead could only watch helplessly as Hiko was swept away. Returning to the bridge, Kit and the others were horrified to discover the ship was heading towards the nearest port. If it succeeded in reaching land, a single cable could spread the virus worldwide, leading to a global catastrophe. They had to find a way to stop it. Their only option was to sink the ship using the ample diesel fuel in the ship's tanks to create an explosion. They unanimously agreed on the plan, but just as they were about to act, the transformed Robert blocked their path. Kit swung a stool at him, only to be sent flying by Robert's punch. Steve's firefighter's axe seemed useless. Even a pistol couldn't inflict fatal damage on Robert. In the end, it was Nadia who made a move, stuffing an incendiary grenade into Robert's body. With Steve's help, they finally managed to neutralize Robert. Get down! After confirming Robert was dead, they quickly proceeded with the plan. In the fuel storage, they released all the diesel and installed a timed bomb. As they were about to leave, the giant monster broke through the door, knocking Steve and Nadia unconscious with two punches. Kid also accidentally falls into the diesel pool below, but the monster doesn't let her go and immediately jumps down and grabs her. It turns out that the virus has learned of their plan through the surveillance cameras and is trying to get the location of the triggers out of Kit. Kit refused to speak, and the monster began electrocuting her. Although Steve and Nadia, having regained consciousness, rushed over and attacked the monster, they couldn't kill it. It wasn't until Richie arrived with a rocket launcher that they were able to knock the monster down. However, the fight wasn't over, just as they rescued Kit, the monster stood up again. With a casual swipe of its arms, the monster knocked down the support beams, burying Richie and Steve underneath. Kit and Nadia had no choice but to run, with the monster in hot pursuit. But when Kit and Nadia hid in a storage room, the monster turned and went elsewhere. With only minutes left until the explosion, Kit and Nadia, wearing life jackets, continued to flee. Unexpectedly, the monster caught up from another direction, holding the detonator they had just installed. With no way out, Nadia decided to sacrifice herself to hold off the monster. The moment she was grabbed by the monster, Nadia didn't hesitate to blow up the oxygen tube on the ground. Despite the massive explosion, the monster was not destroyed. On the other side, although Steve narrowly escaped with his life, he found Richie barely alive. Before dying, Richie revealed a way to escape. As Kit faced imminent danger, Steve finally arrived to join her. Following Richie's last advice, they headed to the armory. Seeing the repaired emergency ejector seat, Steve understood Richie's intent. Before the monster could catch up, they successfully escaped using the ejector seat. 
Tied to the other end of the rope was Richie's bomb, which detonated just as the monster discovered it. As they hit the water, the research ship behind them was completely obliterated. The explosion drew the attention of a nearby merchant ship. By dawn, Steve and Kit floating on the ocean were rescued by a helicopter. 